So welcome around the world, everybody. Uh, I'm Richard Evans from AME Canada, and I'm pleased to introduce the second in our wonderful series of AME Two Second Lean Leaders Roundtable. If you haven't been with us before, it's a fast-paced question and answer session. We're going to be with you for the next hour, and I'm going to let Paul introduce our guests and our mega guests from today. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, so the round the round table is essentially we have two uh, constant members. This would be Bernard from New Zealand and Alex Ramirez from Houston. Most of you know these guys. This was Bernard's idea to put this whole thing together. And then we have three rotating panelists to answer your questions. So today we have Ryan Tierney. Everyone knows Ryan. Everyone knows Tom Hughes. And we have Joe Silva. Not everyone knows Joe Silva. He's an amazing two-second lean maniac from Idaho. And he's going to be giving us his great input. He has a great cabinet-making business that is over the top. So that's our format. Richard, first question. Okay, so here's the first question coming up. This is from Clint in Houston, Texas. We are a couple of months into our two-second lean journey. Our morning meetings have started off pretty basic, where we ask anyone to share improvements they've made from yesterday and then do a quick review of one of the eight forms of waste and share any announcements or housekeeping items. I'd like to continue to fold in more complex lean topics and make sure that time does not feel overly repetitive and stale. What are some items you have included in your morning meetings that you have found inspiring or beneficial to your teams or ways you keep that daily morning meeting fresh? Okay, Ryan. Yeah, the first thing I would say is that the f you've kind of given it away in the first sentence. You said you're two months into your two second lane journey. We're 10 years into our two second lane journey. So don't get disappointed if it's not going the way you want it to. Our first 18 months was absolutely terrible. So <laughs> if you're eight, the, the fact that you're even doing meetings and you've been doing it consistently for eight weeks, I think is unbelievable. A few things that we have done and we still do is, uh, you know, everybody rotates the morning meeting. We rotate the morning meeting host. We've been doing that for a while. We do stretches, we do gratefuls. But the key thing here is to keep changing it up all the time. Because if we do the same thing for even three weeks in a row, it gets stale. So even yesterday, we, we introduced a new slide called a workplace shout out, where we're taking a photograph of somebody's area. We give them a shout out and we give three reasons why that person is getting a shout out. It's just small things all the time to keep it fresh, keep it consistent. But the other key is that those ideas must come from the people in your team. It can't be you as the leader suggesting all the new things to keep the meeting fresh. It must come from the, the people that are doing the meeting. That's what I would say. Okay, great answer, Tom. Beautiful. I think the one of the biggest pieces of advice is keep it relevant to what's going on in the business. So what I was doing, especially in the first company I did two second lean, is I would face challenges day to day in the business, especially cultural and behavioral issues. And I would flag that up and I would bring a lean principle that directly addressed that problem. So Very for example, for example, in my first company, it was quite toxic. Uh, a lot of the management didn't know the people's names. So I had the slide where I'd put up and the most important, from Dale Carnegie, the most important word in the English language is someone's name. And I would Beautiful. repeat that for three or four days, maybe longer, till I felt that it had permeated into people's consciousness. That this is, for example, uh, think of the next person. If I, if I saw we had an issue where oh, there's obviously people are handing work off in a not good way and we're having that problem and it's generic, then I would make that a point and I would repeat it until it got in. I think one of the big things, you have to balance okay. repetition with excitement and keeping it interesting because a lot of okay. the learning is done by repetition. Okay, good, Tom. Okay, Alex. I think uh, one of the things is rotating people is essential. So everybody has the opportunity to get out of that bubble and feel comfortable with the team. That's how they got out in doing improvements when they get confident with their peers. The second is do, do not lose focus on, it's about developing them. I used to do it as a production meeting and I totally got deviated. So focus to develop people and grow it organically, whatever. Don't try to copy any of us. It's, it's, we can give you ideas and we can benchmark and you visit, but whatever you, it feels good for you or people are asking, or have doubts, 
bring that topic in there. Bring that kind of uh, information in your meeting and, and exchanges. Make it fun. Most of all, make okay. it fun. So let me just say this. So Ryan said, always change, constant. Tom was make it relevant, address the issues that are up in the company. And you said, focus on developing people. I'm just generalizing the ideas that you're getting right. Am I correct so far? Yeah. Joe, yeah, yeah. It's, all your, it's all yours. Okay, first of all, I just want to say thank you for the invite. I feel like uh, I'm with an all-star crew here. <laughs> I feel like the, <laughs> these are the kind of men that see like Leonardo da Vinci, Picasso, <laughs> you know, Rembrandt's up in the clouds. They see beautiful art. and You're, you make, you're what, making us see, blush, Joe. It's <laughs> much better. It's just they much. see Mona Lisa. <laughs> if you used to ask me what I see, I just see a horsey and a doggy. But anyway, <laughs> jumping back to that question, the morning meeting, uh, we have an outline of what we do. And uh, that's what we want to you know, we want to cover those basic things in the outline. But the guys can do whatever they want with it. And they can put... If they want to do training in the shop, if they want to show like what we showed this morning with Ryan's, um, we showed that this morning in our in our training. I actually did the meeting. And so we're going over items to address. We keep it simple. They can change whatever they want and they could do it in any order they want. But we definitely want those things that are in the outline covered. And so items to address, things that need to happen. We have one guy that goes over who's going to do what for that particular day. Everybody's okay. on the same page, and it seems to work okay, out. Okay, so Joe's point is flexibility. There's an outline. There's a certain standard, but allow some flexibility. Bernard. Great answers, guys. Great to be here. So really quickly, um, I agree with all of you guys. We do some stretches at the start. That helps to um, – we got that idea from Japan and from Ryan's business as well. Do some stretches. It's pretty cheesy, but um, get into it. Uh, definitely rotate the leadership straight away. We did that within the first week of reading the book of Two Second Lane. Just start rotating. Just put people in that position and just support them. Uh, that's really, really, really key. And then um, making sure, yeah, like like Ryan says as well, and all of you guys, just keep changing it up. Keep on making it better and better and better. Everything is under scrutiny. Everything's up for improvement every day. So that means your morning meeting agenda is really probably the most important thing to keep improving because it sets the tone for the business every single day. So I think Bernard, that's really critical. I have, a, I have a question for you, Bernard. Of everything, what do you think the most important element, though, of the meeting is for you? I just want that simple answer. Yeah, okay. It would be... It would be... Uh, I can't put it into, I don't reckon, one thing, Paul. Rotating the leadership and then changing okay, it up. Rotating, rotating the leadership. That's, that's, they're really okay. fine. And one okay, more thing would be the, the, okay. the CRO. The chief, be the chief reminding officer. Make sure you guys are yeah, bringing in new things like your core values, your mission, your vision, rotating those things Good. through the meeting. Okay. Richard, next question. Hmm. Okay. So the next question we have is from Putra in Toronto, Canada. What were the biggest challenges you faced during the early phases of lean implementation and how did you overcome them? Okay, let's, Bernard, let's start with you. Single biggest challenge, single biggest challenge, Bernard. Probably the same for everybody, but getting, getting everybody to buy in, people that have seen you try lots of new things over the years in business and <clears throat> thinking that this is just the, the flavor of the month again. Um, so that would be a huge challenge. And I guess the way to, our answer to that would be, get the morning meeting underway and make it stick and show up at every single morning meeting um, at, that Good you answer. possibly can, making it stick. Good answer. Biggest challenge, Joe? So I think the biggest challenge is it's, it's a little overwhelming in the very beginning. So just keeping it simple, starting off with the simple things like cleaning mm. the bathroom, uh, starting that morning meeting when maybe some businesses aren't used to doing a morning meeting and getting that ball rolling. Um, but, okay. So Bernard said consistency. Joe, you said keep it simple. Yes. Not making it too complex. I think that's the beauty of lean for me and the success we've had is just keeping it as simple. Kindergarten simple. Okay, good. Alex, what is the, what was the biggest challenge for you? I think it was my plan manager in Houston. He's a great guy, but I didn't have him on board. And he basically cracked in, uh, in one talk. We, we found out that he says, Alex, I can't do everything. You want numbers? You want operation? You want to be excellent? Did you want me to do this two-second lead thing? I said, forget. I had to take a choice there. Forget about the numbers. Doesn't matter if you go down. Just do what I'm telling you. Let's do this. Let's read the book. And that was a major thing. 
hitting my plan good, manager good, on board. Good, good, good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Taking, okay, the, taking that pressure away. For me, a uh, uh, bigger challenge. I had a, quite a choice I could have selected from, but for me, the payment structure that we had in my first company was a we had a piece rate structure. And it okay. simply wouldn't have worked if we tried to do lean with that piece rate structure. So ah, we had to change. Okay. We had to change the entire payment structure. We had to change everybody's terms and conditions. And I had wow. to convince the ownership team and every single person that they wouldn't be worse off after we did it. Wow. Great answer, Tom. Go ahead, Ryan. My biggest thing was getting people to see what I seen because I seen, I came across Paul's video one night. And I watched it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Like I binged every single video back to back. And we have to remember sometimes that we're going in the next day to our company. Those people don't know what we're talking about. They've got a totally different perspective. So my biggest challenge was trying to get everybody else to see what I seen because I was seeing like years and three or four or five years down the line. I could just see how your company could be. But everybody oh. else was... was was a way, way back in their thinking. So getting their thinking to catch up with my thinking was the biggest challenge. And so, and the big thing about your thinking, I think was just so critical and I don't hear people say, is you had the long-term vision. You saw where this was leading. They just saw, hey, I'm fixing one thing that I'm doing every day. You saw yeah. the long-term vision, powerful, very yeah. powerful. Okay, great answers, everyone. Richard, next question. Okay, next question is from David in California. What do you do if you don't have the ability to change your people? We work for a government organization and we get the people we get. We also lose 33 to 50% of our people every year due to job turnover. Wow. Okay, well, Ryan, I'm gonna let you go first this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan, that's, that's a hospital pass, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, the first thing I would look into is why are you losing 50% of your people? I would go deep, 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 deep into that big time. That's what I would spend my, Good answer. the rest of my, the rest of my week doing. Why are you losing 50% of your people? Okay. We, every single company in our area is struggling to get people and we have a waiting list. Why is that? Because we're so different. So you're, yes. you're maybe not being different or remarkable enough to attract new people. Ah, good. Good answer, Tom. Uh, yeah, uh, I've also seen this problem with huge labor turnover. And yeah, when I really, really dug into it as a newcomer to the organization, the answers were pretty simple. And uh, that just look for that. And you'll find so much gold in there. What I found was uh, pay was a big problem. Nobody wants to talk about pay. Uh, but it's a real issue in a lot of places. Second was the training of people onboarding. So it was so stressful to get up to speed that only the survival of the fittest managed to do it. That's what I've seen time and time again when turnover is a big deal, so as, well, as well as a is, toxic culture. So your answer is, what do you do if you don't have the ability to change your people? Face, basically focus on a few fundamentals, the pay, the process, the onboarding process, and you probably won't eliminate some of these problems. Did I get mm -hmm. that correct, Tom? Yeah, and uh, try your best to filter what's coming in. Uh, like, I'm not aware of the exact context of the question, right. but that's another obvious one. Filter what's coming Alex. in so you can improve. Alex. I haven't really had a problem with the software. The software has always shown me that they want to do good if you power them and you are there to help them. So they're probably getting bored. That's why they're leaving. They, they're not empowered to do anything. Probably just the pushing button mindset because of but, maybe but Alex, what about more the question more, not just that one, but what do you do if you don't have the ability to change your people? But I can't believe that uh, fifty percent of the people are completely like uh, not good. You know, if they're leaving is because they're not motivated, that they're getting bored or they're so there's something wrong with the system. Absolutely, and, the, and fix probably the you've ever seen, the, yeah, fix the system. And I would say, because of that atmosphere, if that's the situation, I would start in a little place with five people and then have everybody look what a lean little organization looks like. That's and I cool. bet you anything, they're going to jump, they're going to be in line ready to work for you. Okay, good answer, like, Joe. Okay. What do you think? 
So I think with us, when we started that lean journey, I just had to sell my people. I can remember watching Paul on YouTube, and then I really started studying and really watching. And I came in, and I just told my people, hey, this is who we're going to be. And uh, if you guys are with me, then you're welcome. But if anybody's not going to be on board, then I'm I'm totally fine for them to move on. I think it's just selling your people on the idea. And if you do this, it's going to make not only the company's life better, but ultimately it's going to make the your life better. And it really has. I think my guys, they believed me when I sold this idea. And now they do make a better wage. They do get health insurance. They do get a 401k. They do get one Friday off a month. They get two weeks. Uh, there's so many things that I could not even offer before other than a wage. And so they're total believers. Um, I think if you was just to okay. take your people and have them talk so to Joe, somebody. Joe, Joe, your answer then essentially is you need to do a better job of selling and presenting the concept rather than focusing on losing people and why you can't change the people. Absolutely. And, you know, if some people are going to leave. I'm fine with that. I want people that want to ride for the brand, you know, and not for the wage. And if they're willing to invest their time with me, then then they're going to get the benefit of it also. I want to come to work for you. All you can say is that was beautiful what you said and what you're <laughs> articulating and providing for your people. Bernard. Okay, real quick. You can't change people. Yeah, yeah, good one. Um, I would say um, one thing is put all your energy into your A players. So you always keep a list of your A's, B's, and C's. If you get who you get, you're still going to identify some A's. Don't waste your time too much on on um, B's and C's unless they're unless they're rising. But the morning meeting gives them that opportunity and gives you that opportunity as a leader. So make sure that morning meeting is locked and loaded so that you can get to know your people well and make sure you're getting around the gemba and getting to know them. Uh, and you're soon going to know you know, who's the A's, who to put the energy and put, put your time into. Um, if others won't get on board, then they're going to leave anyway. They're going to be part of that 33%. But I think you're going to bring that turnover rate down as long as you've got the hygiene factors, right? Like pay is a hygiene factor, right? People don't often, people, if people are paid okay, they won't leave a company. They'll generally leave because of toxic culture. So you're going to have to turn that culture around and that's going to come from the morning meeting, you showing up being the CEO, the chief energy officer, bringing the, and, and being clear on things. So from day one or from their first interview or from, from when they first start, give them a playbook saying, this is the way we operate around here. These are our values. This is our mission, vision. These are the things we've got to get okay. done every day. This is why we get out of bed. Be really clear so that there's, if so that then you at least you keep the good people. <laughs> you know, this is this is the problem we had in okay. our early years. We'd lose good people because we weren't clear on, on um, you know, we didn't give them the best opportunity because right. they didn't best information. So Richard, I mean, so Bernard, I think one of the key points you said for me personally in that answer was, that you you deliberately focused on your A players in the development of leadership team. Absolutely. Okay. I think that's really powerful and really good information. Richard, next question. Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, what are some of your suggestions to implement Lean in an office setting? Stream decks, templates, new software, et cetera. Okay. Ryan's a master at this, but I'm still going to go to <laughs> Joe first. Joe, you get you get this one first. You kind of just stole the words out of my mouth because I have stole stuff from Ryan. So the stream <laughs> decks, things like that, that's just beautiful. That's one cool thing about Lean is you can just do copy and paste. If somebody's successful in something and you see that and it applies to what you're doing, um, I think it's awesome. My guys, that's the other cool thing about Lean is they're not only doing uh, improvements out in the shop, but they're also doing improvements like on cabinetware, say drafting programs that are a little bit clunky. They're forever improving that, cleaning it up. And once they take care of that, we get to reap the benefits of that forever. We don't have to struggle with a, a program being off. So I think the two second improvements, the stream decks, and just uh, when you see something or hear something that somebody's doing that's great, just implement it. Okay, Alex, in the office, well, what are your suggestions? Well, I'll let... Uh... Uh, Ryan and do the physical, everything he's done, which we all copy from him, is great. But one thing that is is also the culture of the, the routines. And I remember doing uh, lean in a sales team where the sales are all in, the, some are in their car, some are in the uh, customer office, some are, you know, in, their, in, in the plant or so, in, everywhere. And you could tell just by having routines, a morning meeting, inside the, the sales team, which is an office, a virtual office, it is totally possible we'll have processes. And that was a big game changer for the sales team. So, but, okay, so specifically, what did you do with the sales team? I didn't get that part. Well, just get them to talk. 
get them to have a uh, a, a morning meeting. Okay. When okay. you have so sales teams, words, they're all spread I out. See. So we did a, a video conference through Teams. Uh, okay. And they could be, you know, in 50 different places. And they start to get all the ideas to improve how to serve the I customer. Love it. Okay. And, but, so it's not only the physical, but how do you get them to just talk for a morning meeting? Okay. Some, what are your suggestions for implementing lean in an office setting, Tom? Name your wastes. Make your waste visible. Because I think the biggest challenge in the office is the waste isn't visible like it is in a factory. So okay. at Lumen, what some of our waste, we named our waste. I wrote about it in the book. Um, so wait, uh, interruptions were a huge waste. Project ambiguity was a huge waste. So we had things for us like inventory wasn't particularly relevant. Neither was transportation in our particular business. So allowing our people to see and name the waste that are relevant to them outside the traditional eight waste was very okay. powerful. Good. Very good answer. Ryan. Yeah. What I would say is I second what Tom said as well, because we've done that in our office. Uh, so, but my, my second idea is that you need to find somebody who is a lean maniac in the office because let's all face it, let's not beat around the bush. It is harder to do in the office. It is. People, it's not as easy to see. It's not, you, you don't see the overproduction. You don't see the motion. So you absolutely focus on one person in your office and spend as much time as you can with that one person and try and pick somebody who is an influencer personality and you'll know straight away who that is in your office. Everybody's got that influence or personality. The cool person that everybody goes to, or they look to them to see what they think before they right. make a decision. Okay, Focus right. on one who is person. that for you? Who is that for you? I'm just curious. Uh, at we the minute, we have them, three. Okay. We have many, but Kerry. Kerry yeah. is a leader. She's mm -hmm. our accountant. She does mm -hmm. Stream Deck improvements every day. She's putting improvements up every single day. And Kerry, Kerry she's really quiet. But she quite she's got a quiet confidence mm. and she mm. improves all the time. She's doing like three or four Beautiful. improvements every single day, and everybody feeds off Kerry. Beautiful. Bernard. Okay, awesome. Great answers, guys. Loving this session. Um, so we always say use technology as an accelerator, not a creator of momentum. That's really critical because so many people come in and they want to buy, buy all these latest technologies, put them in their business. But don't try and use it as a creator of momentum. Use it as an accelerator. That's a really key point in the office. Um, and and as we all know, if you don't, if you have, if you can have the best technology in the world and the best software, your best software, best all of these all of these great things. And Stream Deck's amazing, by the way. But if you haven't got, if you're not continually training your people and challenging them to use it better and better and better, again, it's just a wasted tool. So you end up with a lot of waste sitting in your technology. And in fact, you can end up with huge amounts of rework. You can end up with, you know, so much stuff that you're not even using, just excess inventory of technology. So be careful about that. I agree with what all these guys, all you guys are saying. It's amazing. Um, love being on this. And it's, it's, um, but remember, we always say, you know, again, like a CRM, you have the best CRM, but if it's garbage in, it's garbage out. So training, training, training. Things in the office every day on our chat, we see new SOPs, updated SOPs, people updating templates, people updating templ um, email templates wow. going out to customers. Like every day in the office, we have we have just as much many improvements going in the office every day as we do oh, across amazing. our factories. So, I mean, so Bernard. There's no excuses. Your answer, no excuses. Was, your, your, your answer was so powerful. And the one, the beginning answer was incredible. Be a creator. Don't just be someone who's always buying the latest technology. And I think that's very powerful. And a nonstop stream of improving templates, SOPs, and so forth. Beautiful. And Richard, time. just so you, everyone has a perspective, we are 23 minutes into this. I think we've done three or four questions now, Richard. Has it been three or four? Five. Five. We've done five questions, 25 <laughs> answers, because we've got five panelists. Yeah, five panelists. That's pretty impressive in 25 minutes, in 23 minutes. Next Keep it question. rolling. Keep it rolling. This is great. <laughs> Next one from Jack in Kansas City. How do you resolve disagreements on the best practice for a process shared by multiple people, given that one solution isn't obviously better than the other? This is a good question. Actually, Alex, you're first. We used to get the uh, supervisor, lead man, and the the operator together so they would pass it on through the, the different posts but normally let them run the experiment and if the facts are there there's no discussion really based it's on just, facts simple. based on facts just stay objective quickly what are, what are the fact what are the facts you're looking for quickly well it depends on the improvement if it's uh 
if it was a safety, is it safer or not? If it's faster, I mean, you measure mm -hmm. the, the time. If it's right. quality is better, let's look at it or measure it. Sometimes we can measure. So it depends what it is. But once you stay objective, Focus once on you facts. start getting it personal, you lost the game. It okay. Tom, beautiful. Beautiful answer. Tom. Uh, I must I say, in, in, in all my years, I don't remember having a really fractious argument of this nature. Maybe it's just me. Um, and I've been putting together a lot of standards. So I, I would say, show me, run the experiment and just let's go with it. And let's, not, instead of talking about it and having opinions, yeah. let's see what it, what wow. it is, what okay. it's like in reality. Okay. Very good. Ryan? What I would say is to encourage or coach people to remove their ego from the process. Because a lot of times people hold on to uh, an existing process, not because it's better, because yeah. they don't want to give in to the other person's idea. So by removing ego and focus on what's best for the customer, not what's best between two okay. people. So Ryan, you already said the answer, but I'm going to query you one more time. How do you remove the ego? What's the number one way to do that? I think what, what Alex says, run the experiment, get the facts and have it on paper like you're saying it's better, but the results have shown that it's obviously not. And, the, and okay. why, why do you still why do you still think it is? And when that's the facts great. are there, you, you, you can't argue with that. It's, it okay. can only be ego that's left. Excellent. Joe? We don't care who has the, the um, an answer as long as it's the right answer, as long as it's the best answer. I can remember back when I played high school football, if the coach would name off who the starters were and you didn't agree with that, you could challenge that and you could go head to head with that person and if you was to beat them out. So we set a standard. And then if somebody wants to challenge that, so that's the standard. That's the way we're going to do it. Say it's putting the, a drawer together. Um, that's the way we're going to do it. But if somebody disagrees with that or they feel like they can make it safer or the quality better or it's it's simpler or the speed and they want to challenge that, they have to show that in a morning meeting. They say, I want to challenge how we're doing a drawer. I feel like I can mm, do it. Beautiful. Beautiful analogy, too, with the coaching and challenging the position. And I, I think that's a really it's just like a musical orchestra. The first violin, second violin, you can challenge them to see whether or not you can move up. Very good. OK, Bernard. Yeah, I love all that. Yeah, same same vein. Go go to the Gemba and say, show me. Like, we're pretty brutal with this sort of stuff. Like, you've got to get clear answers, black or white, yes or no. Like, come on, we're not here to fluff around or stroke anybody's ego. We're just here to get the best answer, the best process for our people so that there's we're removing the struggle. We're making work easy. We're making work flow. We're just... Just keep it simple, guys. Like, what are we here for today? We're here to improve the life of the customer. We're here to improve the life of our people. Like, come on, let's get together and do a little Kaizen event together right now and let's watch the process and let's all agree on the right process right now. <laughs> and Bernard, I could hear you saying that in the morning meeting and that is something you have to coach that mentality over and over again. Well Absolutely. Done. Okay, Richard, next question. Did I get everyone? Did I miss anyone? One thing on that, Paul, you've got to train your leaders to be the same, black or white, yes or no. Get oh, it clear, yeah, no yeah, fluffing yeah, yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. Did I, Richard, did I miss anybody on that? Anyone got an answer? I think I think we've got everybody, Paul. Here's yeah. the next one. All right, go ahead. Here's Derek from BC, Canada. We have a company of 150 people and started implementing 2SL within our sphere of influence. We have a group of 50 staff that are on board and running with this. What's the best practice to expand our sphere of influence into the admin side of our ops? Is it best to let it happen organically? I love this one. Well, that's a tough question. I like it. Okay, Bernard, you, you're first. Well, um, I guess, can you start bringing, oh, uh, one thought would be start, start bringing, start rotating staff through this group that's working, right? So start bringing one or two or three into the morning meetings that are working and actually have them working for a day in that in that um, operation. There's nothing like working in that operation, bringing people from the office into the factory for a day and vice versa. It's so, so, so powerful. So that would be my thoughts. Start cross-pollinating. Go, 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 wow. go. Beautiful, beautiful. Joe, what would you say? Well, that is a tough question. Um, I think it just cross-training and things like that where, um, where you can bring somebody from a different department in and they can, uh, if your processes are super great, they can see it and just trying to 
to spread that so it goes through throughout the company. If I'm understanding the question correctly, right? So you've got you've got this one area. Let's say your drawer making uh, uh, department was really really bang on. They were or your 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 cabinet door making department, which is like amazing. But the drawer making department was not really on track, and they were just doing kind of the same old stuff. How would you influence them to think like the ca cabinet door department? I think that's where we try to do a lot of cross training here and uh, for all kinds of reasons. But if you've got a department that's just rocking it, uh, maybe sending somebody over there to assist for a week and starting to learn that. And I think that's contagious. You know, you start getting some of these great ideas and they'll bring that back to their department and start uh, implementing things like that. Because a hey, lot good. of things, a lot of things cross, even though you might have a door section and you have a drawer section. There's uh, some of the basics are still the same. And if they can take that over, I think that would be sure, successful. Sure. Okay, Alex. For sure, uh, cross-pollinating, but get them to clean the restroom with the people on the shop floor. It's it's humbling. Uh, Brilliant. The other way, too, sometimes the people on the shop floor will come to the office and see waste like the people in the office never seen. Uh, so so cross-pollinating. And another thing is I would spend time with the leader of that office department. And maybe make a book club because Ooh. you can't be there every time. But if, if the leader understands the principles, it takes care of itself. Fabulous answer. Tom. You know you're getting it right when they're asking to participate. And you know you're getting it wrong if you feel like you're pushing it. Nice. It's, not sim it's not simple for me. Um, I was really okay. lucky. I found that out by accident. I had a big delay before I could start morning meetings. And it was, when are we having the morning meeting? When are we having the morning meeting? When are we starting lean? Beautiful. Oh. When you're starting lean in that environment, it's not like, oh, why are we having this morning meeting thing? So okay. if you feel you're pushing this on to that other hundred people, you're not at the state where you should be trying. You need okay. to be focusing on the 50 and getting nice. that better, getting that singing and more magnetic and pull the rest of the people on board. The I rotation question is brilliant as well. You need to bring them in, work there, certainly see the morning meeting, do little mini lean tours, create yeah. pull. Okay, Brian. Um, I'm going to be hardcore Paul Akers here for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know this company. I've never heard of uh, this company before, but somebody, and people might not like to hear this, but at some point, the owner or the top leader of that company has to stand up and say, we are a lean organization. Yeah. This is how we operate here. That conversation Absolutely. has to happen at some point. Uh, and it I, sounds I, like wow, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. That's hardcore Ryan Tierney, not Paul Akers. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really cool answers. Okay, next one. That's next the reality question. of lean. It's the reality of lean, though, guys, isn't it? It's got to yeah, be lean absolutely. from the top. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Now lead from the bottom, Bernard. Remember from the bottom. Servant leadership, you're at the bottom of that pyramid, not at the top where okay. all the okay. monkeys the are bottom. looking at the asses above you. Okay, here's the next one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Josh from Barnes Welding. We specialize in farm equipment repair and manufacturing. What's your most powerful morning meeting agenda item? Our most powerful one is product of the day. So what's your most powerful morning meeting agenda item? Hmm. Okay. Go ahead, Ryan. Yep, straight away. It's our favorite lean improvements. I look forward to that slide every single morning. I just can't wait oh, to see good. what the, the improvements are going to be. Love it. Awesome. Love yeah. it, Tom. I love defects. Personally, Ooh, I love okay. defects. Okay. It really stimulates okay. proper... Because I, I love real, real challenges, real problems. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. and bringing everyone in and it's so culture building to not have fear while we're having that discussion okay. talking out okay. the problems what are we going to do about it i think it's a massive culture building thing very good so best improvement defects alex what do you think's most important slide uh, it, it's got to be the the video of the day you know for all the improvements because there's messages okay. there there's yakatan there's improvements right. there's just a the celebration culture celebration of what they've done and and we okay. talked about a little while ago how the alex artists... i want you to tell people what you're talking about though just real quickly because you're the one that invented that whole thing how what, what are you talking about 
I just copied it from you, but I, I, what I do is just capture all of the improvements, pictures before and after videos from our WhatsApp chat and make a little short video and play it in the morning meeting. And so every day, I'm not even you did it every, every day. day. I did it once a year. Alex says it for me. It wasn't for me. I did it once a year. Alex did it every day. All improvements. Correct. Correct. And I understood and that, that by passing messages like this is what is we tolerate. This is not. This is great. The improvement we should try it in shipping and receiving and maintenance and the office. And so they start collaborating and not even sharing it in one plant, but now okay. all different plants. So it's beautiful. Like Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Joe, favorite, most important part of your morning meeting? So if we asked one of my guys, it would be items to address. But I think my favorite agenda thing would be the improvements for sure, because it's so uplifting, especially when you see okay. either a picture or a video of what somebody's done. Man, it just pumps the whole crew. And, and okay. it's, it's contagious. It's contagious. Okay, so that's three for improvements. Bernard? Yeah, ours would be a daily compilation video from all the improvements the day before. It's got your name pops up like Pete, Bob, Mary, like as the improvements roll through. It's, ah, it's really, beautiful. Okay, like well, putting, there, there you go. It's a, it's a drug. Right. We all agree it's a drug, right? It's a drug. I have to yeah. do it every day, no matter where I am in the world, I have to do it. Beautiful. Next next uh, question, Richard. Did you get everybody? I didn't think you got everybody. Yeah, yeah. we got everybody. Next yeah, one. Okay, everybody. Jack from Kansas. When there are 30 plus people trained on most processes, how do you coach to make sure that the improvement isn't made without the consent? I think we've already answered this one, but let's look at it. While also not stunting the immediate passion and capability for eliminating waste, should they address the improvement immediately and bring it up at the next morning meeting? I think we've answered this one, Paul, in a different I, way. I'm not, not sure we have. But what do you think? I think well, I think I think I don't know that we've answered it. I, I my opinion is let's take a crack at it real quick. Okay, Ryan, go. Uh, I'm just reading it again. Sorry to understand it. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I can hop uh, in while you're reading it if okay. you want. Okay. Go um, ahead. Yeah, basically, you need a process owner. There needs to be somebody that has overall authority on that process. And when you want to make a change, they needs to be done with their Perfect. approval. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You have to have the one master of the process, yep. and then work work from there. Correct. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And that's the way we do it at FastCap, exactly the same way. Okay, Bernard. Yeah, so the team leader has ultimate authority like on big processes, but there's lots of – so we have, we, have, we have different – if there's tiny improvements, the people know there's a whole bunch of stuff they can do without asking for permission, or and there's a bunch of stuff they do they have to involve their team. There's a bunch of stuff that they work on that they have to get, you know, have to get um, ultimate sign-off from the team leader. Absolutely. Good. Okay, Joe. Each department has an ace or a team leader. And so that individual would have to go to that person. So they're in charge of that department. And uh, so they're responsible. And if that person that's assisting can get to that level, then someday they will be a team leader and they will be able to train. Perfect. Okay, Alex. Yeah, if it goes to the supervisor or lead man level, but I would, if I can give a recommendation is do not, as a leader of a company or organization, do not give the answer to them. Because they'll mm. come to you to say, what do you think? Do we have this dispute or whatever? If, mm -hmm. if that ever happens, send it back. Do not answer the question. Love it. Let them love figure it, it out and it, run the experiment. It. Okay, Ryan. I'm, I'm going to be really, really honest. And we've been doing two cycling lane for 10 years and we still have the problem that, that Jack from Kansas City has. We, we still have mm -hmm. it, been, been really honest. Mm -hmm. People are so eager to improve and sometimes I, I don't want to dull that down. So I kind of let them do it. But then the next day we'll find something that's maybe an unimprovement. <laughs> uh, I'm just being really, really honest. It, it still <laughs> happens. We haven't got it figured out. So <laughs> I'm not sure if that helped, but... I like that. That's, I like a, that, that, yeah. that, that, that's a new title of a book, Ryan. I'm I'm the the <laughs> it's a learning world. It's a learning world. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before, but that's so true, isn't it? But you know, yeah. even those unimprovements to me, I don't care because that's how I learned. I mean, so much of what I do fails. I like, the improvement I made this morning didn't work, and I had to redo it again and again and again until I got it right. I, I think a lot of yeah. that a lot of that depends on the criticality of the product you're making. 
Like right. we're doing safety critical stuff. Some of our stuff is super safety critical, and it's not just the random improvements aren't aren't a thing. But if your right. product isn't that mega critical, then you've got a bit more latitude. Right? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Next question. Next question is from Putra in Canada. How do you handle resistance to change from employees? <laughs> Ryan, I'm going to let you go first this time. <laughs> Yep, we had this problem at the start, but now we don't have the problem anymore because people know that if you work at Seat Matters, everything is going to change <laughs> every day, every every half an hour. So keep going, and they will get used to it, or they'll leave. That's very harsh, but that's it's true. Beautiful, just beautiful. You're you're a changing organization. That's what a lean company is. So get used to it. Yeah. Okay, wow. I love it, Tom. Uh, I think a lot of this is down to your own personal style. I don't think you can mimic someone else's process or way of doing this so for me I'd, I'd like this four nice arm around the shoulders and one punch in the face frankly <laughs> <laughs> okay well, how I'm built. <laughs> very very, very pithy answer Tom. very very good okay alex i mean i'm sure if you have one or two that have problems you bring him in and explain him why and this is important but the key is that if you're not a what we call lean maniac, if you're not 100% convinced of what you're doing is the right thing to do, if you don't have it in the heart, like you have a, I look, when I started, I didn't even have an idea if this would work, but it just felt right. And I just went with it 100%. And if they see you convinced, they follow you. If if you are kind of a, well, let's see if this is a flavor of the month again, totally. we'll try it out. And they can smell that a mile away. So if you're sure. not 100% convinced, don't even start. Okay, beautiful. Joe? I think I just tell people, even when we're hiring, if you don't like change, this is probably the worst place in the world to come work because we're forever changing and we're forever uh, trying to figure things out. And even when we think we have things figured out, we're still changing stuff and trying to make it better. Uh, you might have a major win and you cut some times in half, but then you just keep like, can we do it better than that? So, yeah, if you don't like change, boy, this is a terrible place to work. <laughs> <laughs> Little humor. Yeah. I love it. Bernard. Yeah, great. We just give them a lean wedgie, pull it, lift them up. <laughs> 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 no, there's two things. One is like when you first start the journey, obviously you've got a whole bunch of people that are that are not on board with it, but as you're hiring new people, obviously, then you can be very clear like Joe and everyone else is saying, because here's our values, here's what we do. Really key from day, well, before day one, we give them our playbook from the first interview. It's about 110 pages of stuff about our company, and it's so yeah. clear, and we give them some videos to watch. We give them Paul Acker's book to listen to. Like, yeah, make that really key. So, But if you're, if you're handling employees that are in the business right now to answer Putra's question is like, yeah, you one-on-one -on -one is good. Draw them aside, have a chat figure out whether you then you're going to figure out pretty quick whether you are going to be able to change them or not because some leopards don't change their spots and some some sometimes they do that's very rare so figure that out one-on-one -on -one, um and then and then you can work with them in the morning meetings and work with them one-on-one -on -one around the company um and help you get your leadership team to support them as well there's a few ideas beautiful beautiful richard next question as uh, from nick anchorage in alaska what does your typical day look like what percentage of your time do you spend coaching actively working on improvements with team members or doing your other necessary tasks with operating a business. Okay, Ryan, I'm going to give you this one too. I know everybody wants to know your schedule. Go for it. What do you do? <laughs> What's it look like? Yep. It's changed in the last year, to be honest. Uh, I spend more time now doing, you know, we do loads and loads of tours. We're doing the podcast, obviously videos. So I spend probably 50% of my time producing content on the other 50% running the business. So it's, it's changed a lot in the last year. But before that, it was probably 50-50, but 50% improving the business, 50% working on the business. I don't do as many improvements as I used to do. I would love to get back to it, but I just haven't got the time. Like personally improving um, I get more excited now about inspiring other people to personally improve. Um, yeah. So I'm spending lo loads and loads of time producing content, which I suppose right. is helping takes time. on a bigger takes level. Time. Sure. Yeah, sure. Does, yeah. Okay, Tom? I think it depends where you are in the business. For me, my first two-second lean company would have been four or five hours a day just on lean. 
preparing the okay. morning meeting, getting people improving, all of that, getting momentum and it gets to go down as the as you get momentum in the organization. These days, uh, because I, I'm only in our manufacturing company one day a week now because I'm so focused on Gambadox four days a week. So when I'm in the manufacturing organization, a couple hours, I actually sit, I don't have my own office. I sit in the Gemba and uh, that lets me take the temperature of things and address issues as they're coming up and keep the culture up. Have we lost Paul? Yeah, he's, fro he's frozen. He's Alex, frozen. take the he's ball. Frozen. Take the ball, Alex. So, so in our organization, uh, we're quite big. So at the time, right now, I'm in a different project. But at the time, managing Tuvaloid, it was really gradually spending up to seventy percent of the time in the shop floor, and that is in the morning meetings, looking at the improvements, refilling, uh, lean cave, doing videos for the guys looking at the lunchroom and talking to them. If you're out in the shop, that, that's the best added value for me. Then the other 30%, there are things that we need to comply with and formats to to do reporting and meetings. But but I would say the, the main thing was spending time in the shop with the guys. That's the, the, the biggest impact you can do. Nice. And, make, and making the, I learned this with uh, in FastCap with Lucas is, Asking the questions that no one is asking. That is the key. <laughs> okay. All right. We haven't got Paul back yet, but uh, here we go. Let's go to the next question. Uh, Derek from, uh, oh, we've what already had that Joe? one. What about Joe and Bernard? They oh, sorry. That. Joe, That's go, okay. Joe. <laughs> Let's go back to the last one. Joe, what does okay, your typical so day look like? <laughs> It kind of depends on the day. So like Mondays is my day to visit with customers, have them come in to go over drawings and things like that. As far as the coaching and training, I wish I could spend more time, but we do on the job training. Um, so we're definitely showing a guy. We have somebody watching them um, until we feel like that they can start flying on their own. Then we'll let them go off on that particular task. Um, but we kind of just, we just roll with the punches, you know, so it's hard to say, but I do know like Mondays for me are my, it, I have this beautiful facility and I'm never even here. <laughs> the only day I'm here is on Mondays. But um, so, yeah, we just kind of roll with the punches depending on what's thrown at us. We do a lot of installs during the week. So we're a cabinet shop that in the old days would do two or three houses a month. And because of lean, now we can do three or four houses a week, literally from raw material to awesome. installed. So I yeah. do a lot of installs. I'm a working owner. I take care of sales, but I'm also out, you know, installing and things like that. So it just, that's what we're mostly doing. Okay. Appreciate it. All right, Bernard, last one before we get to yeah, the next so, question. Um, coaching with the team, if we just talk about coaching rather than working on improvements. So working on improvements is pretty much um, all of my day because I'm always working on improving. Like I do a lot in the sales and marketing team. So improving brochures, improving website, blah, blah, blah. But coaching um, is... Um, as and when, so it fluctuates. So some days it'll be 10% of my day, some days it'll be 20% of my day. And the early days of implementing Two Second Lean, we're talking six years ago now, um, it was like 90% on the Gemba in the factory, getting the place sorted with the team. So like bringing the team with me on that journey. So that was just getting down and dirty every single day of the week, 80 to 90% of my day. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right, so next gonna question. It's going to change over time. It's going to yeah. change over time, guys. All right, so this is from John. He says, I'm struggling with being the lean maniac and feel that I'm breaking the chain of command. Any thoughts? Let's go with Tom first. Whoa. Um, I think at the end of the day, I always say improvement starts with I. So, you know, I, I struggle to see whenever you're the person who's leading and making improvements and leading by example. Uh, it's unless you're changing critical things, I struggle to see how people are going to have a problem with that. If you're not, if you've got your span of control and you're the lean maniac at improving, even if you manage a team, I'm running my quality department like this. That's my job. It's my authority to do it that way. So, yeah, I, I don't see how you're going to break the chain oh, of command. Richard? Approach it like that. Okay, you're back, Paul. Yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. I had power failures, but I don't understand the question. Oops. I'm struggling with being the lean maniac and feel that I am breaking the chain of command. Does that mean they, they're not a lean maniac? 
no, no, he, he is the lean maniac, but he's like the, the, the one that's pulling everybody. And he's in, not the boss. Because he's not the leader <laughs> of the company, he feels like Actually, he's breaking the chain of command. I, I can speak much better. I didn't understand the question. I was yeah. that guy. Absolutely that guy. I, I wasn't the leader of the organization. I was the lean maniac. Improvement starts with I, full stop. Create okay. the magnet, be, be the pole, what, what, to do it. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Okay, Ryan. Was Ryan gone? Uh, yeah, no, I, I think there, there's so much that John can do um, with his own sphere of influence. But at the same time, I would be spending a lot of my time trying to work with whoever the decision maker is because it'll ultimately come to the breaking point someday where there has to be a decision made. Are we doing this or are we not? Because I'm not going to waste my time doing all these improvements and get, getting all excited and doing it in this department when somebody three levels up isn't going to buy in or they're going to, you know, it's going to all end in tears in 18 months time. Yeah. So I would get, still keep the excitement, but work on the whoever the main decision decision makers are, work with them directly and get straight to the point. I'm going to answer point. this question. And I'm going to interrupt just for one thing. I'm going to answer this question. I don't answer many questions. There is somewhere in the universe that is looking for you, John. Yes. Find it. I going to say that. Alex, That's go ahead. Good. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's also going down. So, for example, uh, down to the shop floor, uh, breaking the chains of command. So one thing I did learn from Chuck Cacciarelli in his place is that we don't go necessarily give orders or, or challenge the guys in the shop floor at the equipment. There's there's chain of command. So if you're not walking the lines with your supervisor, you're just wasting time. It's waste. Because having your supervisor next to you and having the, him see what you see, you're training him. So they're going to help their people. They're going to improve. They're going to challenge their teams. Not that I would never talk to anyone. I talk to everyone, but you know, it's not fair for the guy on the shop floor to get some questions maybe from the top management and he freaks out and he might have had other orders to do or you know. So, so okay. I understood. Okay, you have to be very uh, uh, training that chain of command. You know, the leaders, okay. supervisors, and lead men. Joe. So if I'm understanding this uh, question correctly, it kind of reminds me of like. Right, riding dirt bikes up in the hills. There are certain trails you can tell where the trail's at. But if nobody was to ever ride on that trail, it's a matter of time. It's going to look like the forest. You would never even know it's there. So me being the leader, I have to, if I feel like it or not, I have to be doing everything I know um, as far as lean goes because all of my team's looking at me. And if I let up, they're going to let up. So if they know that I'm keeping the throttle down, um, that this is who we are, this is our identity, then I feel like mm -hmm. the team's going to follow. But if I okay. if I get off that trail and leave it alone, it's just going to turn right back into the forest again. Joe, here's a question for you. Why do you not let off the throttle, though? I don't let off the throttle because I know what it was like before lean and how, how tough it Thank was. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. You're not doing it because it's obligatory. You're doing it because you know it works. I know for a fact it works, and I would be absolutely crazy if I went back to the way we used to do things. Like this, like shoot yourself in the head like 10 times. That's what I would feel like if I even <laughs> thought about going the other way. Bernard, go ahead. Great answer. Okay. I would say two things quickly. One is that if you do the hard things now, life becomes easy. If you do keep doing the easy things, life just gets harder and harder. So being a lean maniac, being a maniac is not easy, but life gets easier, right? So you're doing the hard right. things, making improvements. The second thing I'm going to say, like Paul said, I say this to everyone that asks me this question. My boss won't get involved with lean. What do I do? I'm, you know, and I'm doing what I can in my sphere of influence. I say, well, mate, just keep cracking, go hard, keep going hard, influencing those around you. Not that you're, you can't, you can't usurp authority because you're not going to get anywhere in life if you do that. But, but because you need to come under authority if you want to get anywhere. A great leader is must first become a great follower, right? That's that's just yes. a, a rule. Absolutely rule. So you can't go and shaft your boss. There's there's no way. I'm not advocating for that at all. But even if he's a loser, you can just keep doing your thing and you can keep looking around. Someone out there in the world is going to hire you at a much better pay rate if you're a lean, if you're a true lean maniac. Very good. Okay, Richard, can you drag me down in my seat real quick? 
Yeah, and then here's, I, I think we should start wrapping this, okay? Um, so yes, first of all, I think you all did a, a phenomenal job. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. Very good answers. Are there any critical questions from the audience right now that we need to answer, Richard? Uh, I've got a couple, uh, Paul, okay. but I can't uh, drag Don't you down. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Don't worry. Don't worry about me. Keep continue. Don't worry right, about just me. Just a sec. Daddy, don't worry about it. Okay. I got to get back to where I am now. Just give me a second, Paul. Okay. We, we can edit this out, the, the recording. Don't worry. If, if there's somebody who has a question, take your mic off right now and ask it if you think you want to. Go for it. It's okay. Here we go. I got it. So this is Ash from Stoke-on-Trent. Um, more of a curiosity rather than a question. Each of your own words. How do you define lean? Wow. <laughs> okay, good question. Ryan, lean. What is lean? A system to get more out of life. Okay, Bernard. A human transformation system. <laughs> Excellent, <laughs> Joe. I think it's just ultimately eliminating all the waste, all the trash, and just uh, that's what it is for me, and doing it right. Your value value added, Richard. I want to, add, Richard. What do you think? The only way to live your life. <laughs> okay. I love it, Richard. Uh, Alex. It's a way of thinking, a way of living. Way of thinking. Tom. Yeah. A path to calm, productive flow. <laughs> a path to one more time, Tom. One more calm, time. productive flow. Oh, beautiful. That's poetic. Wow. Poetic. Wow. poetic. <laughs> I love this. Okay, another question real quick, Richard. From Next the one. Uh, <laughs> what type of technology equipment should be considered standard in a lean environment? Other than a 3D printer. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, uh, go ahead, Tom. I think you, you're Gambadox. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Should be considered. <laughs> okay. okay. That's, that's cost you $10,000. Uh, a shameless. A shameless plug. No, just I believe it. I actually believe it. It's true. <laughs> I, I know, that's I'm a great joking. product. I'm not joking. <laughs> Let's go, Alex. I'd have to say smart sheet software. It really okay. transformed the way we do good. things. Yeah. Good, 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 good answer, Joe. So we use Trello and have great success with that. Um, okay. That's a big, big one for us. Beautiful, beautiful. Bernard. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm actually gonna um put a put a put a spoke in you know, for for Tom. We love Gimba <laughs> Okay, so good. good, 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 good. Okay, Ryan. Uh, absolutely. Um, Stream Deck. Stream Deck. Okay, and my answer is uh, to do getting things done. I couldn't live. I live in. I, you take. You could not take that away from me. You could take everything else away. You can't take that away. Okay, next question. Uh, what strategies do you use to keep employees engaged and motivated in the lean process? Have we answered that a little bit? Do you think we want to hit well, that again? What do you think, Richard? I, I, I think is lean, we're leaning towards the morning meeting is the first one. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's right. the most obvious one. Yeah, but okay. what else after that? Uh, learning club? Alex, you can talk to Yeah, that. but I, I think everything that you would do, it doesn't matter as long as they see that the leader, I think Ryan talked about this, if, if the leader is supporting, is engaged, and is important for him. Everyone will follow. Good answer. Everyone will have fun. Good but answer. It's so frustrating when, when the, you know, if the leaders are not engaged. I've seen this over and over. Look in the mirror. If the your leader own points, own behavior. and the leader points instead of goes with. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> we're we're out of time, Paul. Okay, we're out of time. Okay. We're out Very of good. time. Okay, Great job, everybody. everybody. Just so, Richard, I think. Everyone who's listening should should send more questions to Richard directly so we're ready for the next time and we'll filter through them and we'll get them going. Right. Yeah, I, I got lots of questions. What I'm going to try and do next time is to uh, maybe get a WhatsApp number so everybody can send them to WhatsApp mm -hmm. and that will be directly to me as well. So I'm going to try that. Okay. So everyone, on behalf thank of you for coming. Vegas does yes. and Paul, thank, thank you guys so much. Everyone thank for you. Thanks Ryan, for inviting Bernard, me. Bernard, Joe, Alex, Tom. Uh, Paul, unbelievable. The, the learning that everybody's had today was incredible. Uh, we'll get this up on the YouTube channel, the Amy YouTube channel. So you really won't know what to watch, whether it's Ryan's channel 
or whether it's AME's YouTube channel, you're going to be pulled one way or the other and get some really great stuff from everyone. Thank you no, again. Okay. Thank everyone. you, everyone, for Thank spending so some time much. with us. Really okay. appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining.